Hi, my name's Professor Cathy and I'm a scientist. This is my lab. Why don't you have a look around? Today we're going to read a book about parasites. Come on, let's go. Today we're going to read a book called My Mum is a Parasite Scientist, That's Rad. And I actually wrote this book. I have a daughter called Emma who's 14 years old and a couple of years ago I really wanted to help um, her understand about me being a scientist so I wrote this book. This book is also um, illustrated by Brian Doyle who made all the cartoons and by Brittany Azuri who did the wonderful layout. So let's learn a bit more about parasites. My mum is a parasite scientist, that's rad. My mum drives me crazy talking about weird little creatures called parasites. Mum calls them marvellous mini microbes and says that some parasites can even be found in poo. Oh, I think that's so disgusting, but also kind of cool. What is a parasite? A parasite is an organism that lives inside or on another organism called a host. A parasite uses things from the host that it needs in order to grow and survive. The reason my mum talks a lot about parasites and poo is because she is a scientist. Her job is to study parasites. Did you know that a scientist who studied parasites is called a parasitologist? It's a very hard word. Mum says that parasites are little creatures that you normally cannot see without using a special tool called a microscope. Microscopes use magnifying lenses and light to let you look at small things that you can't see with your eyes. Some microscopes can magnify objects more than 1,000 times their normal size. I'm going to give you a fast fact now. Parasites can be found on every continent of the world. My mum told me that most people may not realise that parasites are part of our everyday lives. Sometimes you might have parasites living on you. For example, head lice. Lice are very common. Sometimes we get them in our hair. Did you know that head lice cannot fly or jump? Mm, that's interesting. Fast fact. Head lice are a type of parasite that live in hair. Head lice survive by sucking tiny amounts of blood from your head. That's kind of creepy. Parasites can also live on or in plants, animals or fish. My family has a fat grey cat called Max. We make sure that he has no fleas or ticks or worms because they could make him sick. Fleas, ticks and some worms are types of parasites. Have you got a pet such as a dog or cat? Sometimes you might give them a treatment or a collar to help them getting, stop getting parasites. Did you know that many museums display parasites in jars? One day maybe you can go and have a look. The types of parasites that my mum studies are called malaria parasites. That's me, that's what I study. For part of their life cycle, they live in blood cells. Malaria parasites can sometimes make people sick, which is not nice. My mum, that's me, and other scientists are trying to make new medicines that kill malaria parasites during different parts of their life cycles, including when they live in the blood. I'm going to give you a fast fact now about malaria parasites. People can be infected with malaria parasites by being bitten by the mosquitoes that carry them. But don't worry, malaria is very rare in Australia because we don't have those kinds of mosquitoes, so you're okay. When my mum is working with parasites, that's me, she wears a lab coat, glasses and gloves. And you saw me wearing a lab coat before. She also washes her hands after working with parasites. This is to make sure that parasites cannot infect her and make her sick. And I've got a question for you to think about. How do you think a lab coat, glasses and gloves protect scientists while they're working? And maybe we can talk about that later. There are many different types of parasite scientists. And here's a game where we try to match the different type of scientists with the picture. A biomedical scientist looks for new medicines to keep people healthy. A wildlife parasitologist works to protect animals in their natural environment. A veterinary parasite helps farmers make sure cows, sheep and other animals are healthy. And a fish parasitologist studying parasites that make coral reef fish sick and making sure the fish um, we eat are safe. 
I think the fish parasitologist might match with this one. And I definitely know that the biomedical scientist matches with this one because that's me. I think the veterinary parasitologist who looks after animals must match this one with the kangaroo. Ooh, or maybe this one here with the cows. Mm, that's interesting, a bit tricky. The wildlife parasitologist. Well, kangaroos are wildlife, so that must be the correct answer. There we go. I think it's very cool that my mum is a parasite scientist. As long as she doesn't talk about creepy parasites found in smelly poo or creepy head lice in front of my friends. The end. Almost. We also have some fun activities. The first activity is to use colourful clay or plasticine to make your own parasites. And here's some wonderful examples here of horrible head lice. This is a picture of head lice. And here's some plasticine parasites made by Liam, who is 11, and Xavier, age 9. Don't they look really, really creepy? There's a tricky tapeworm. Some fun facts about tapeworms. They have a round head and a long, flat body. They can grow to be up to one metre long. Here we go. And here's some wonderful worms from some of our children. Fantastic fleas. Fleas cannot fly, but they can jump. Adult fleas eat small amounts of blood. There's a flea there, and there is a wonderful flea, and that's actually made by my daughter, Emma, when she was 11 years old. There's also a quiz here that we might like to think about the answers to, and I'm not going to give them to you now, but I'll read the questions out. Are parasites living or non-living? A or B? Question two, what kinds of living things can parasites live in or on? And the answers could be only people, only animals and fish, only plants, or people, animals, fish and plants. Another question, what do head lice eat? Skin, blood, hair, or fairy bread? Mm, yum. Where can you find fleas? Only on cats, only on dogs, or on cats, dogs, and other animals. And maybe we can talk about these in the question time. Here's another idea for you. Maybe you could do some word wall art. If you didn't understand any of the words in this book, maybe you could write the name of the word up the top and then draw pictures to help you understand what these words mean. That's a good idea. The end.